Hi, I'm John. Your nonprofit electric cooperative is and has always been owned and controlled by you, the member. Co-ops have stayed fundamentally the same for decades, but more member owners are choosing to produce their own electricity by using home-based renewable energy generation, such as solar panels or wind turbines. This change has created a cost shift among members and the need to ensure fairness for all members. Here's how the cost shift occurs. On the left is a home with a renewable generator. On the right is a non-generating cooperative member and above them is the cooperative. You'll notice that both the member with the renewable generator and the non-generating member pay the same amount for their power, illustrated by the green dollar signs. They currently also pay the same amount of fixed costs, showed by the blue dollar signs. This occurs because right now the solar panels aren't generating electricity, but watch what happens when the sun comes up. As expected, the number of green dollar signs going to the cooperative decreases. But look what happens to the blue dollar signs. Many of these fixed costs shift to the non-generating member. We'll explain why this happens in a moment. If we add multiple renewable home-based generators to the system, the cost shift quickly grows, with additional operating costs transferring to the members without these generators. To understand the cost shift, you first have to understand how you're billed. Each month when you pay your bill, you are paying for the generation of electricity, how it gets to your cooperative and from the cooperative to your house, and all the equipment and personnel required to provide safe, affordable, and reliable electricity. To ensure that reliability, the system must be built to work when members' usage is at its highest, when everyone's TVs, computers, heaters or air conditioners and other devices all need power at the same time. For many co-ops in Montana, that occurs in the sub-zero pre-dawn hours of winter. Typically, the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining at that time, so members are using a lot of co-op power. And even the few co-ops that experience their highest usage in the summer still deal with cloudy, windless days. This is why no number of home-based generators connected to the grid can help co-ops avoid system upgrades. It's similar to a highway being built with three lanes in one direction, even when two lanes are enough at all times except for rush hour. The road must be built to handle rush hour traffic and the co-op system must be built to handle the highest possible usage at any one time. Now let's talk about your power bill. It has two charges on it. One is a fixed monthly charge that covers some of your cooperative's operating or delivery system costs. The second charge is a variable charge, which is based on how much electricity you use. It includes the cost of electricity you use and delivery system costs based on how much electricity you're taking off the system. Historically, the variable charge was fair because the more electricity you used, the more system costs you paid. This is no longer the case. At times, members with their own renewable generators can avoid this second charge even though they still use the delivery system to market the excess electricity they generate and use the system when their generator isn't producing. What I'm describing is an incentive program for home-based generators known as net metering. When the sun is shining or the wind is blowing, their generator may produce more electricity than needed by the member. This excess electricity cannot be stored, so it flows back onto the cooperative's system. Generator owners are then credited on their power bill for this excess electricity. However, they're credited at the co-op's retail rate, the rate that covers a portion of the co-op's operating costs included in the variable charge. Renewable generators can produce excess power one minute and not enough power to meet the members' needs just a few minutes later. Regardless of which way the electrons flow, a member with a home-based renewable generator still uses the cooperative system. However, when excess electricity is generated at the home to eliminate the variable charge, that member is no longer paying their share of the system's operating costs. 
the co-op's operating costs didn't change. They just shifted to the members without home-based renewable generation, and they pick up the tab. Now let's go back to that graphic we showed you at the beginning of this video. You can see how the cost shift occurs because when the home-based generator is making electricity, that member no longer pays the variable cost, which includes part of the co-op's operating costs, again represented by the blue dollar signs. Your electric cooperative's goal is to come up with an equitable billing system that supports home-based renewable generators without the cost shift. The final solution will correct the cost shift so that even when the sun shines or the wind blows, everyone pays their share of the operating costs, like this. Your local cooperative supports home-based renewable generation as long as all members are treated and billed fairly. Your cooperative's board of directors is hard at work to find a solution that eliminates the cost shift. A change in how you're billed or the net metering policy is needed to accomplish this. Your local cooperative will keep you informed and seek your input throughout the process. If you have any questions, call your local electric cooperative.